Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. I'm Mike Catalano with you, getting you ready for the Bills and the Steelers coming up on Sunday at 1 o'clock. And uh, we want you to make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We keep moving up the subscriber ranks. Jenna keeps reminding me to remind you. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that. We try to give you as much Bills content as we can uh, to get you ready and to analyze the games as they're played now it's bills and Steelers coming up and I think the number one storyline coming into this is the bills injuries that they're dealing with it has been really a storyline for the entire season certainly after week number two when they took care of the Titans and had all those injuries we know Jordan Poyer is not playing we know Dawson Knox is not playing now the bills made some moves on Saturday afternoon um, they released Brandon Bryant defensive tackle uh, in the immediate, I think that means a good chance that Oliver is playing. Who knows? Maybe even Jordan Phillips is playing. We'll see how he is because he's listed as questionable for the game. Now, they also brought up wide receivers um, with Isaiah McKenzie still in the concussion protocol. He did practice full. He was wearing the red jersey this week, so we don't know if he will be out of protocol and able to play, but a lot of fans excited about this. They love Isaiah Hodgins. So he has been brought up to the 53-man roster. They also elevated Tanner Gentry. They can do that with practice squad guys a couple of times. I don't know if Tanner Gentry would be activated for this game. I guess it would depend on what else they're going to do. But we'll get into the individual uh, situation involving the wide receivers for this game in a moment. But in terms of the injuries... First of all, let me just a brief aside here. I love what the NFL has done. They were forced into it during COVID when they were allowing teams to move players from the practice squad more freely, elevate guys a couple of times. I think it's great. I think it's great for the game. I think it's great to have healthy players on the field. In the past, it was so punitive to move players. You would have to release guys. Then they went with the practice squad, and it was so limited on who could be on that squad and when they got called up. Now it's a much more fluid situation. Uh, it's almost a bigger roster for teams, the way they can bring players up and down and then elevate them and bring them back. So I think that's a positive for weeks like this when you're not sure, and you guys know it's 90 minutes before the game when they announce who's going to be active and who's going to be playing, or until the agents uh, tell Adam Schefter who's going to play or Ian Rappaport, and then and then we know about it maybe a little early. That's the way that kind of stuff works. So injuries are a big factor coming into this game. Are the Bills being a little cautious? Maybe. I think that only applies a little. I think guys are ready. They're going to play. They do have to keep in mind it is a long season and what they're going to do. They do have the Chiefs next week, so they want to be as healthy as possible. It's not that they're bypassing the Steelers, um, but they're at home for this game. Guys are still nicked up, so we'll see how it plays out. Obviously, like we said, Poyer's not playing and Knox is not playing, so that changes things in a great way. But Let's see 90 minutes before the game who's activated, and then we'll get an idea. All right, let's go to the Steelers here for a storyline. Second storyline is Kenny Pickett is starting in this game. If I'm a Steelers fan, I'm excited about this. Um, some people are saying, wow, you're starting him in the first game as a two-touchdown underdog against the Bills. I think that's actually a pretty good place to play him in. There's no pressure on Kenny Pickett other than he wants to show that he has the potential to be the guy. I don't necessarily think – even a diehard Steelers fan thinks he's going to just come out there and light up the Bills and win the game. Doesn't mean they can't win the game. Kenny Pickett's going to need help. But if you're a Steelers fan, you know, it's that transition. He's the guy from Pitt. You're bringing him in. He shows those things, you know, some of those words, the swagger, the moxie. He's got that. He's a tough kid. Um, not afraid to throw the ball. Don't get too worked up on the three picks. The first one was a Poor bit underthrown, but it was deflected. The last one was on a Hail Mary. So he did have three picks in that game. The ball never touched the ground. 13 passes, 10 of them caught by Steelers, and three uh, ended up being caught by Jets players. But I think this is the right move for this team going forward. Now, is he going to flash some things? Is he going to say, I'm going to test? It sounds funny, but test this Bills secondary because of the injuries? Yeah, I think he might. I think he's going to take some shots. He does have skill position, guys. You know, picket to pickens could be a thing in Pittsburgh. Um, somebody make up a T-shirt for that. I'm sure they already have it. But George Pickens is a player. And he was coming off an injury at a University of Georgia. And that's why he slipped to the second round. But he's a guy that can play. 
So you got to watch out for him. You never know about Deontay Johnson. It just hasn't worked so far this year, but we've seen his talent before. Chase Claypool, I have no idea. I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know if he's going to be a long-term stealer, but, you know, they've got Friar Muth at tight end. They have talent on this team. And now they have Kenny Pickett, who is their future. He's their present now. He's going to have to start against the Bills. Uh, that's still one of the top defenses in the league. And you still are going to be staring at Von Miller and Greg Rousseau and maybe at Oliver coming back. So I think the Bills are going to do their best. I think there'll be times they send somebody maybe to try to fool them. But look, you know the way Leslie Frazier likes to play. If he can get there with four and he can drop guys into coverage, and we don't know if Tremaine Edmonds is going to play. Um, I think that's looking less and less likely. But, you know, maybe they try to take advantage of some stuff in the middle without Jordan Poyer and maybe Tremaine Edmonds. But I think he's going to do his best, Leslie Frazier, to try to get there with four, drop into coverage, and say to Kenny Pickett, go ahead and make those tight throws and see what you can do. So that is. Now, I mentioned the injuries and some of the things going on, and it's safety with Poyer out. And obviously we know Hyde's already out. Um, the Bills made their call on that a week ago. Not only did DeMar Hamlin start, but Jaquan Johnson didn't have any snaps on defense. DeMar Hamlin was the guy playing in that role, really the Micah Hyde role. So Jaquan St- uh, Johnson steps back in at safety this week. Um, and, you know, after being set aside for, understandably, Jordan Poirier, you thought maybe there was a possibility they'd mix the two of them in. That wasn't the case. I thought Johnson appeared to play pretty well in that Miami game. Um, you know, they did give up that one big play in that game, but he's back out there apparently for this week. So that is something to look for too. Um, you know, in the secondary, you've got, you know, Kair Elam and Dane Jackson going back to Pittsburgh where he played his college football. I know he's excited about this. It's great to see him back on the field and playing pretty well last week. So in terms of that, I think that's interesting for this game. But it flows right off of the Kenny Pickett thing. You know, what is he going to see from that Bills defense? How do the Bills play it? And again, I think the strength of this defense, certainly going into this game, especially if Edmonds is out, is that front four, is that pass rush. So I think Kenny Pickett's going to see that. I think, again, I think he's going to make some plays, but I think they're going to force him into some things too that he hasn't seen. I want to get to the Bills offense. And I'm going to say the run game. And I'm I, James Cook, it's fascinating to me right now. I swear to you right now, I don't know if James Cook is going to have a real role in this game or if he's going to be inactive. I don't know what they think. And I know a lot of people just think, put James Cook in and the running game is going to take off. No. I mean, Devin Singletary is the running back. But can Cook get more carries? Yeah. Pittsburgh's not great against the run. Yeah. They don't trust him at the moment. Is this an opportunity to get him on the field and see if they trust him? I I don't know. This is big boy football. If the coaches don't trust the guy – I know he has talent, but, I mean, come on, James. You know, he's fumbled the ball. He's dropped passes. He's shown very little spark a couple of times, certainly the long run against the Titans. But when you think about that Bills running game, can they get it going? And look, you know what we're talking about. We're talking about running backs averaging four yards a carry here. We're not exactly talking about them becoming a running team. So I'll be interested to see what the role is, if there's a role for James Cook, because – You want to see what you have at some point, but uh, this ain't the preseason. These are the regular season games, and they're already shorthanded with a lot of stuff. So let's see what ends up happening. Then back to the wide receiver position. So I mentioned with the injuries, who's going to be out there? And we don't know about Isaiah McKenzie, so now fast forward. You know, I said Tanner Gentry, you know, uh, brought up from the practice squad, you know, and then because Jamison Crowder went on IR, And then Isaiah Hodgins. I would think Isaiah Hodgins would be activated with Crowder out. And if McKenzie isn't going, that would open up that spot. Um, So let's see. I'm also going to think without Dawson Knox on the field, I think you're going to see more four wide receiver sets. At least that's what I would think they would do in this game. But um, I'm really going to be interested to see what they do at wide receiver in this one. Maybe Hodgins does get his opportunity there. I think Khalil Shakir is the guy who's going to benefit from this. I think he's going to get more and more snaps. I think he's going to get a regular role. He can play all the positions. Uh, I've said this multiple times. He's replicating the role that they had for Gabe Davis as a rookie, where he can play in the slot. He can play outside. He can play inside. He does a lot of things well, made a couple catches last week. And while I mentioned Gabe Davis, 
Uh, I think he's having a big game. I think he's been frustrated. I don't think he's been healthy. I think he's a tough wide receiver and a guy they want to see out there making plays. He hasn't been able to do that. Um, he practiced full this week. I think that was important to him. He's even, you know, dropped a couple. He had the one in Miami, got knocked out of his hands. That's not Gabe Davis. That's not the guy they expect it to be. I think that's what's holding this offense back from big plays because really – Stefan Diggs is the only guy at wide receiver that's making the big plays. So let's see what they get. Uh, so let's see what the third, fourth, fifth receivers do tomorrow. But I'm really interested. I'll put it to you this way. I have Gabe Davis. I picked him in the fantasy team. Been back and forth with the way he's been playing. I got him in my lineup this week. I think he's going to be big. And the last thing I just wanted to say to you guys is, how about Sunday at 1 o'clock, right? Um, there's either been road games where we were Sunday at one o'clock, but a home game Sunday Steelers in town. I think it's going to be a fantastic atmosphere for this game. And it's funny the way we used to look at Sunday, one o'clock games, like that's the bills, the losing team. They put you at Sunday at one. Well, this game Sunday at one. And I think we got Nance and Romo coming in. So I'm surprised they didn't do the Baltimore game last week, but those guys are coming in. It's a big CBS game for them this week. So um, and I like the excitement. I've said this before. I love when the Steelers come in. I like going to Pittsburgh for games. I like that these two franchises get linked together. Somebody this week mentioned feels like a division game. Uh, they've said that before even about the Titans, the teams they play all the time. But in this case, I would love to see it um, because I just I like the Pittsburgh franchise. I think I've said before it's what the Bills wanted to be when they grown up when they grew up. So they've grown up now. The Steelers have had this stability, a rare thing. Go back to Roethlisberger playing as a rookie and then taking the team as a young guy to the Super Bowl. So they're going to see what they get out of Kenny Pickett. But the Sunday, 1 o'clock, the weather's going to be good. It's been a strange one so far. We had a night game, you know, L.A. when it was 1,000 degrees at night. And then uh, you had the game in Baltimore where it's raining on the road. So Sunday at 1, I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to seeing how the Bills play. I know some people backing off a little bit because of the injuries. I'm not. I said 35-13 during the week. I'm going to stick with 35-13, and I think the Bills get the win. They move to 4-1, and and we all get set for Kansas City a week from Sunday. So that's going to do it for me today. Just a little something to talk about, getting ready for the game. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll be up at the game Sunday. Complete reports. Make sure you check out the Buffalo Plus channel here on YouTube and our audio podcast wherever you get podcasts. You know, you're taking a walk, going for a run on the treadmill, taking a drive in your car, going to work, whatever it is, wherever you get audio podcasts, check that out. It's a unique podcast, different than what we do here on YouTube. Make sure you download that and give us some comments there too. We would appreciate it. So for our whole team, Jenna, Dan, and myself, thanks for watching here on Buffalo Plus, and we'll see you next time. Enjoy the game.